Welcome back to part number four, almost said three, <laughs> of our VCM scanner. So I'm trying to break this whole freaking massive scanner into certain parts to make it easier and quicker for you guys to understand and learn. So I can imagine by making one video is going to take two hours and I probably won't even get to all the information needed. So in part number one, we talked about the channels, how to set everything up, how to add things, how to move it around, etc. For example, these are just basic engine operations such as your vehicle speed, idle, desired idle, and all those kind of things all of this has to do with our turbo all of this has to do with our fuel uh, all of this has to do with our timing and all of this has to do with misfire so you can break it up like that and then we've got stuff for our cam and etc and etc part number two was chart versus time how to basically set up all of these kind of things part number three is setting up the gauges to make it easier for you to understand the gauges then going to part number four um, this is basically part number four what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly drag this down we're gonna make the chart versus time smaller and we're gonna make the gauges smaller so now we can actually see a little bit better over here so this is our spark advanced table this is our spark retard table uh, low term field trims, short term field, long term, short, low term, long term field trims, short term field trims, and our O2 sensor. And this is obviously our RPMs, but it's in a histogram kind of format. So, what we're going to do is we're quickly going to log into a log I did in the past. So, we're going to look at, um, for some reason, it's not showing the spark retard. Even though I know there was, let's quickly go to the Spark Advance. This is fine. This is fine. So it probably just needs some still some fine tuning or whatever the case is. So we're going to talk about Spark Advance. So if we look at our uh, our graph over here, as you guys can see, our engine speed is this axis over here. So basically from 400 RPMs to basically 6,800 6, RPMs. This is our manifold absolute pressure, also known as our MAP, which has to do with our uh, forced induction, our turbo supercharger, uh, which is measured in bar not just to a charger and supercharger, just to say, um, but basically it's whenever we set our foot on uh, on throttle, when it reaches one bar, depending where you are in the world, uh, one bar is your atmospheric pressure. Uh, here, because we are very high, ele elevated uh, above the sea, I think for us it's 0 0.8. Anyway, then going up and up and up and up. Okay, so anyway, uh, what basically happens here is as we accelerate, this little blue graph is actually moving around. So as you guys can see here, as we're going, so basically here we set our foot flat on the throttle. As you guys can see, as the RPMs at the top is increasing, it's moving to the right. And as the boost is there, it's actually there at the bottom. So it goes, goes, goes until we basically let off around here. And the, uh, the boost drops. Once you let off the throttle, your boost drops and your RPMs will slowly move back to where it is currently idling or whatever so basically we were going down to 1600 probably as we went down we switched the data log off so anyway that is one of the ways how this graph works it shows you wherever like basically when you were accelerating you can see at 2400 rpms it didn't add timing it didn't add timing it started to add timing here added 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 you can see it was growing very good as the rpms grow uh and the manifold absolute pressure drops a bit it went up and basically till year when we shift when we shift it bounced one up like over year to 10 it bounced a little bit up and it came down nicely so that's basically what it is so we're what we're gonna do is we're quickly gonna make our own one i want to make a load one all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here to graphs layout uh right over here you guys can see we can add our own one so we're gonna say add a table so here at our table, what we're going to do is we're going to say engine load and we're going to click here on the parameter, which we're going to say load. Uh, right over here, this is the desired absolute year is engine load. So sometimes when you do click on these things, it might not actually work. Uh, so let's say, because look at that as desired load, desired load on fuel or air talk. Here's another desired load. So basically you can see these two doesn't have any values, but this one has a, has a value. This one has a value. So that is how you can see. And then sometimes you've got a desired load year. You've got your engine load here. Remember it's two different things is what you desire and what you are actually getting. So we want to see what we are actually getting so we're going to click on our engine load so then how does how are we going to how are we want to do it we, we want it to work in percentages so how many decimals we want we we don't really decimals doesn't really matter uh then this is average we can leave that so basically going over here this is gonna basically put your 
x and your y is going to put it together so what we're going to do is we're going to work on the y is it no i think we're going to work on the x first anyways if we click here we're going to say click on a parameter so we're going to say rpms is it going to work like that engine rpms here we go um if it gets here they're just going to say would you like the generic sensor i'm just going to say no i know what i'm doing so over here you can see it's revolutions per minute and then the speed function all of that we're just going to leave it as is we're going to click ok so it puts in the code over there so here it says the high value mid value low value we're just going to leave it for now so then we're going to go to the wait am i wrong percent oh no no we sorry we this is the filter we don't we don't adjust that at all so what we're going to do is we're going to click here on our column and row okay so that sorry I, that was a mistake so for our column I, I wanted to say something is a bit wrong so rpms uh rpm so we're going to say engine rpm so no i know what i'm doing clearly i did not know what i just did now <laughs> so this is the values we'll actually get to it now and then this is our row axis as in our parameters so this is going to be our engine load engine load all right, so there is a few loads over here. As you guys can see, there's a load over there and there's a load over here. So you can, you're basically gonna choose the one and if it doesn't work, you're gonna choose the other one. So we're gonna choose the bottom one first. And now you guys can see here is values, okay? So basically these values is the values that it's uh, set up in, like you can set it up in, let's say uh, revolutions is, let's quickly click there. You can set it up as a hundred and then, uh, oopsie. 100 RPMs, you're going to move it to 200, no spaces, 300, 400, 500. It depends how you want this graph. What I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to quickly go, <clears throat> where is my USB cable? Here it is. I'm going to go and plug my VCM HP tuners in quick, and we're going to quickly go to the car's file. Okay, so now I actually went and opened the file of my car. So if we go to, let's say for example, our spark table, we're gonna go to any one of our base tunes, we're gonna go over here. So basically this is your row, and this up here is your columns. So as you guys can see, engine speed is at the top. If we quickly go to our, um, our what do you call our graph we just made, to our engine load, you can see engine RPMs is at the top, engine load is, in, uh, is on the left hand side. So basically what we're gonna do is, we're gonna just go and right click over here, uh, there we go right click we're gonna go to column uh, column uh, axis and we're gonna say copy labels all right so we're gonna quickly go back to our VCM scanner uh, we're just gonna click here graphs layout so we're gonna click on engine load we're gonna go back down here because we copied it what we're gonna do now is we're gonna paste it automatically it automatically puts in the RPMs for you so if we go quickly back we're gonna go over here we're gonna say row axis we're gonna say copy label we're gonna go to our engine load and we're gonna paste that. All right, not so difficult as yet. <laughs> so basically that is uh, everything said and done. So let's quickly close it up. So now comes the moment of truth. Oh, and it works straight away. So uh, for me, by choosing the torque and engine load, uh, desired load, uh, engine load. So yeah, it works. So as you guys can see here, we will basically idling uh, around 800 rpms to say something between 600 and 800 rpms or 800 and 1000 rpms once again we can just refer to our channels and see it's 756 so we're low 800 rpms and as you guys can see as we kind of like uh with very low load uh we kind of uh, got the engine rpms up that was basically for us to try and get to third gear for our pool so once we got here and we slammed our foot on the fuel you guys can see just basically how it walks and then, as you guys see, as RPM goes, it goes to 95% engine load over here. I don't think this is the right sensor, it's supposed to go further. So let's quickly go back. Um, graph layout. Quickly gonna choose here. Is that manifold? Why? Oh, I was like, what? So over here, engine load. Engine load. Okay, so we got it right. So basically, uh, what I did wrong was I just said load there, but it's actually the desired load. And once I place that in, <clears throat> you guys can see all of these numbers basically popping out around. So it's basically the amount of percentage of the load of the engine. So uh, as we can see here, uh, this little 
front part this corner up here was just basically me getting to my rpms and then right over here at 1750 rpms my car desired more uh, power so up to here it was 42 percent of my actual uh my actual load going over as the rpms increased we went to 97 97.8 94.3 95.8 that could have been because that was where i was starting to experience some knock then we went to 99.5 99.6 99.6 and a state 99.6 until i let off on the throttle it worked its whole way back to the front again so that is basically how you do your engine load just for me to show you guys uh, engine load over here so if we quickly look over here at our engine load as you guys can see there's our engine load with this uh, engine load sensor over here this is obviously what I've called it this is the percentage with one decimal going to we did not do any filtering on it uh, going to our engine RPMs here is our revolutions per minute also from our tune we copied our revolutions per minute uh, onto this and in our desired load uh, yeah we change it from our desired load to our from our engine load to our desired load and then the content on the inside is our actual engine load in percentages till 100 basically so there we go this is basically how we did it also with the spark retard uh i just want to quickly see if we can fix it up so this is spark advance okay so basically what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say spark retard and we're only going to choose one piston so we're going to say cylinder number one okay so as you guys can see straight away it pops up so basically as we were starting to accelerate here as you guys can see at the higher rpms at 5600 according to the graph but if i look here at 5400 rpms we pulled negative three degrees pulled 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 until we let off the throttle and then everything went back to zero so that is basically how you can set it up to see where it's actually pulling timing and all of that kind of things so we quickly fixed that graph as well so this works with the manifold absolute pressure so you can see basically at 105 uh which is, is also 5.6 uh that is where oh no no i'm wrong yeah this is basically uh where you'll see it at 5.6 and 105 on the kpa all right guys thank you so much for watching we're gonna drop this video right over here i do hope that i helped you guys out super a lot uh it does this part does actually get a little bit tricky to find the right sensors working and to actually get information in your graph uh then just for the graph just to move around and nothing actually happens you know so anyway, I really do appreciate it. All the support you guys have been giving me. Um, we are going to start off with like a completely different thing now really soon. We're going to start data logging and doing some tuning and all of that stuff. And see if we can get this car faster and faster. So anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see all of you legends in the next video. Please do not, uh, do not be shy to ask any questions. I'll try to help everyone as best as I can. But for now, peace out.